the world is getting smaller. Webcams and cell phones are covering barriers of distances. Look today, we, because of the wonder of television, are in your living rooms. Father, is there any technology in the market to connect husband and wife? There the distance seems to be getting wider and wider. Well, it's because the husband is speaking Hindi, whereas uh, the language of wife is uh, German. What do you mean, Father, by that? Well, when you go to France, speak to those people in French. Right. When you go to Japan, speak to those people in Japanese. Right. Now, the whole problem with uh, family, with the spouses, is that they have two different languages. And they are trying to, each one is trying to speak his language, her language, and they want the other person to understand their language. But they both are having different languages. Imagine what will happen if a German goes to Gujarat and speaks in German. No one would understand. Well, right. And uh, so we say, wherever you go, you speak the language of that people. Or in another word, you can say even frame. Everybody has got a frame. They have their own understanding of love. We see Jesus really transcending his own frame and he goes to the frame of the people. That's why he's able to communicate with everybody. He's able to speak to simple people and he uses their own language. Yeah. His parables are about agriculture, fishing, house building. Yes. He's able to touch Nicodemus. He speaks his language. And he's able to communicate so well to Zacchaeus. Yeah. So the whole problem in relationship here is that people are having different languages of love. Then they are trying to use their own language to communicate love toward other people. And then they come across this stalemate. Right. So that love language has to be understood by the other person. Yeah. Right. Little drops of water make the mighty ocean. There are infinite ways to communicate our love. But Father, let us go to the basics of this love language. Give us the doremi or the sheer basic elements of love language. Everybody has got certain frame. The problem starts when I try to use my frame all the time when I communicate my love toward others. It seems there was a monkey sitting on the top of a tree. He was a very, very kind, good, generous, helpful monkey. He was just looking down at a stream. There was water flowing. And suddenly he saw an ant struggling in water. And immediately he rushed down. He took a leaf. And with the help of the leaf, he picked up the little ant and put it on the shore. And then the ant was very happy. It went forward. So the monkey had a great satisfaction that he helped this little ant. He rescued it. He went up again. He wanted to help more. And then he was looking down at the stream. Then he saw some fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, swimming. They were very happy and all that. <laughs> Suddenly he rushed down and went into the stream. He caught those fishes, fish one by one, and they threw them on the shore. <laughs> and he thought they were all drowning, and then he wanted to rescue them. Now, this is a problem with those who try to look at reality from their own frame, who fail to look at others' frames. So we all know what is medicine for one is poison for the other. Right, Father. Mm. Now, seeing from this angle, everybody doesn't understand love from a single frame. In fact, there are plenty of frames, and uh, this famous author, uh, Gary Chapman, he sort of categorizes these languages. You know, he says there are five languages of love. Of course, there are more. 
Okay. There are more modalities, there are more sub-modalities, but in general, especially when it comes to spousal relationship, he says there are five languages of love. Okay. So each person understands love from one particular frame. Right. <coughs> now, everybody has got all these five needs. But depending on our past, childhood imprint, okay, everybody has one dominant love language. And that is a mode of operation for them most of the time. So shall we go over these five, five yeah, I guess languages so. of love? Yeah. Right. The first one is affirmation. Okay. For some people, mm. when you affirm them, they feel they are being loved. Right. And the second one is called a quality time or your presence, mm. being with them, spending time with them. Right. And that is their way of understanding love. Right. For some people, it is acts of service. When you help them, mm. when you render service to them, mm. they feel that they are being loved. Right. There are others whose love language is uh, tokens of love. Gifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, you, uh, when you express love in form of some tangible things, mm -hmm. give them little gifts, right. give them little tokens, and they feel so happy. They feel they are being loved. Right. <clears throat> and finally, we have people whose love language is touch. Mm -hmm. Now when I say touch, I don't mean touching that person for a long period of time or hugging that person for a long period of time. It's not that. Uh, whenever you express any sort of love, just give them one little touch, one little handshake, one little pat on the back. That gives a, a, a lot of love. Yes. And they right away understand that you care for them. Mm -hmm. Now coming to the first language, affirmation. Mm -hmm. There are many people who want affirmation. Okay. Quite recently, a couple came to me for counseling. And the wife was very, very upset with her husband because of his attitude. Okay. She said, Father, last week I came back from work with a headache and fever. And this man was watching some cricket match on TV. She said, I approached him and said, you know, I'm not feeling well. I'm having a fever and a headache and all that. Can you just take me to the doctor? And she said, my, my husband look, looked at me and said, why don't you take our son, take an auto and go to the doctor? She said, I was so offended. And she said, on the, on the following day, there was a neighbor who was sick. He right away took his car and took that person to the doctor, took care of him, and brought him back. And she said, I am his wife. And this fellow would do service to everybody except me. And she said, he never serves me. He, he never helps me out this way. He never shows me love. Now, when I looked at the husband, he said, Father, you know what? Whenever I do help to her, she never appreciates me. She doesn't even say thank you. And he says, whenever I serve others, they keep on praising me. They appreciate me. And I feel so happy. You follow? Yes, Father. And this lady said, oh, well, I'm his wife. How can I keep on saying thank you? This is too formal and all that. Mm. But that is his need. Mm. That's what he wants. Yes. That is his food. Mm. That's what that makes him now keep going and uh, he requires that. So very often, uh, now people take for granted. Yes, family members, we exactly. yeah. don't give these small courtesies, thank you and please yeah. and yeah. sorry. Yeah, because yeah. yes. for that wife, appreciation is not her love language. There is something else, presence, mm -hmm. okay? So she, she doesn't expect appreciation from husband, mm -hmm. so she doesn't give. She thinks he's like her. That's why it seems your husband went to a counselor for counseling and he said, uh, dear counselor, my wife is upset with me. I don't know how to please her. I really want to express my love to my wife. And then after so much of uh, 
con conversing with a counselor. The counselor figured out that her love language was appreciation, affirmation. He said, you know, all that you have to do to your wife is just appreciate her very often. Say a few words of affirmation. She'll be very happy. Yeah. And she would know that you love her, you care for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the husband made, made up his mind. He said, hereafter, I'm going to appreciate my wife. So that night, as he entered the house, supper was ready. The table was set. Then uh, he looked at the di dishes and then he started appreciating her. He said, you know, water is so tasty, salt <laughs> is so salty, <laughs> sugar is so sugary, mm. and this dish is delicious. And he started appreciating her. Mm. All of a sudden, she was on tears. He said, honey, <laughs> did I say something that is hurtful? Mm. Why are you on tears? Mm. I said something good. You know, she blurted. She said, uh, see, so far I was cooking and you never appreciated me. Today I was not feeling well. I got these dishes from the neighbor's house and then you are appreciating me. Okay. Well, when mm. we appreciate, it has to be consistent. consistent. Mm. Yeah, that mm. is why. We mm. see Jesus affirming people all the time. Even take this Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Jesus keeps on praising those people. He said, blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you. The people Jesus addressed, they were people who never received appreciation from others. They were relegated to the margin of the society. To such people, Jesus keeps on saying, blessed are you, blessed are you. He praises everybody, including Zacchaeus, including sinners. He affirms them. He accepts them. That way, he really understands the language of love. Of those people. And the second language is uh, quality time or uh, presence. So for some people, their language is presence. All that they require from their loved ones is to spend some time with them. You don't have to appreciate them. You don't have to give them gifts. You don't have to uh, do service to them. All that you have to do is just be with them. Just little presence is quite fine. They are very, very happy about it. I know a family where there are old parents. Okay, they are seniors. They have two sons. Okay, the elder son lives far away, like 2,000 kilometers away. But the younger son lives just 5 kilometers away. Okay, as far as I know, the elder son really, really cares about them. Uh, in fact, he pays all their bills. He pays a rent. He pays uh, their electricity bill, water bill, and everything, medical bill. He really showers them with money. Okay? Since he's a little far, he visits them once in a way, maybe once in three months, once in four months. Now, their younger son, he lives very close to them. And in fact, uh, he had to, uh, he has to come to parents almost every day because his office was very close to the parents. And then he would uh, visit his parents for free lunch. Okay, And after visiting them, he would even grab some of the fruits there and take them home. He never gave anything to the parents. But in, in fact, his visiting was for selfish reasons. He wanted free things and he visited his parents for that sake. I happened to meet these parents and then I asked them, among these two sons, who do you think loves you the most? What do you think they would have said? I think they would have said the son who comes for lunch. Exactly. Yeah. The younger one. Because these people, what they want is presence. They crave for the presence of the, their children. One of the first one cares for them, well, he's not there with them. Yes. There is a second one, whether he cares or not for them. He's right there. He's there for them almost every day, uh, visiting them, uh, sharing a few words. And then they are so pleased, so happy about that. Yes. And uh, they even say, it seems, it was a boy and a girl who were getting engaged. Mm -hmm. And the boy came down from um, uh, Saudi for the engagement. It was uh, one month holidays. After the engagement, he was going back. At the airport, this girl was all in tears and she said, uh, I'm going to really, really miss you. So, you're going to come back only a year later for the marriage. 
So how can I be without you for one long year? When she said this, the boy began to sort of uh, console her saying, Honey, no, no, the days are going to fly very fast. So very soon I'm going to come back. Uh, furthermore, we will keep in touch, okay? He said, uh, I love writing letters more than speaking on phone and I love uh, sending gifts and all that. So I will do it at least once a week. I'll either write to you or I'll send you some gifts. Okay? Is that okay? And off he went. He went back to Saudi. And he kept up his words. Like at least once a week she used to receive either a letter or a parcel or something. Well, after a year she got married. Not to the Saudi boy but to the postman. <laughs> Why? Because mm -hmm. her lab, love language is uh, presence, mm -hmm. quality time. Yes. And uh, her uh, would-be spouse, you know, he, he was not with her physically, but it was a postman who was visiting her very often. So she got so attached to the postman. Sorry, when I say this, I'm not saying people will, might get attached to postman and courier man and <laughs> all that. I'm not saying that is just, it's a just joke. an example yeah and we see jesus also offering presence and he longs for this presence uh, when we read luke chapter 10 verses 38 to 42 there we have martha and mary martha goes about serving everybody but mary gives her quality time to jesus Okay, she's at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, offering love. And Jesus says, she has chosen she's the better part. She's chosen well. Yeah. And Jesus also spends his time with people. So, there are people whose need is presence. So, to those people, we just spend little time with them. Just be with them and they feel so happy. Now let's come to the third language of love. We call it acts of service. Okay? Some people feel so loved when others help them. Help them with different works, different duties, chores, whatever it is. The moment you help them, they feel so happy. Of course, we know poor people, they have this love language. Whenever a beggar comes to us, Whenever a poor person comes to us, they look for little help. Monetary help. Yeah. 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 So yes. when you help them that way, they feel very happy. Uh, among many couples, okay, uh, one of them has this love language. Supposing the wife has got this love language, okay, service. Now husband after supper just goes for watching TV, she feels so hurt. All that she wants is, you know, a little service. He has to just take the dishes and keep them in the kitchen or uh, wash the utensils or, or help her with some work, some little work. And she feels uh, so loved. Now, he might uh, have tremendous love for her. The moment he doesn't help her, she feels uh, so unloved. Again, when we come to this Martha and Mary event, okay, Martha is a person who has this act of service as her love language. That's why the moment she receives Jesus, she's very, very busy trying to spread a good table, trying to do all sorts of service to Jesus and his apostles. And complains that my of course, is, yeah, is not helping. Exactly. So when she did not receive that uh, sort of help from her younger sister, she started complaining. Okay, the next... Uh, uh, love language is uh, tokens of love. For some people, any expression of love has to be tangible. They must be able to touch it. Supposing on that person's birthday, you just call up and say, Happy birthday, that person feels so hurt. Why? <laughs> no they are looking for some sort of gift. Mm -hmm. Or even when you appreciate them, it is okay, provided you write it on a, on a card. <laughs> <laughs> on a birthday, you, you, you send a card. Or if you meet that person, go with a little gift. 
-hmm. That gift may not be an expensive gift. You don't <coughs> have to buy them a grinder or a mixie. <laughs> it has to be just something that they can touch, something that they can feel. Mm -hmm. You send an email to that person, okay? So once they read, you click, it disappears. It, it doesn't exist mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. So to such people, you send a little card, a little gift. Give them any token of love. Mm -hmm. They even preserve those tokens. Mm -hmm. And they cherish those memories for a long period of time. It seems when uh, Mahatma Gandhi, he was uh, getting ready for this uh, Yatra. And uh, the people were waiting for him, but he was very busy searching for something. So his wife said, uh, so darling, what you're looking for? He said a little pencil. She said, oh, the pencil that little boy gave. Why don't you look for that later? He said, no, 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 that boy gave it to me with all love and concern, so I shouldn't miss it. So he spent about 10, 15 minutes and he searched, he found that uh, little pencil and he wrote in a piece of paper, no, this is a gift from so and so on this day. And he wrapped it nicely, kept it in its uh, place and then he went for Yatra. So uh, uh, Gandhi, even though he was such a, a noble saint, his love language was a gift. We see Jesus also uh, extending his love this way. Uh, there are people who need a real tokens of love. For example, he feeds the 5, people. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people. Multiplies. You can read this in Luke 9, 12 to 17. Mm -hmm. He feeds all those people. Mm -hmm. So he gives a gift that is tangible, that they can touch, mm -hmm. that they can experience. Once a couple approached me for counseling, this husband was really upset with his wife. He said, Father, last week I celebrated her birthday. But at the end of the day, she was really upset with me. I don't know what else I can do to this woman. He said, it seems in the morning, they woke up, they went to church. He informed the father to have this one as a special intention, her birthday intention. So father made it very special. He prayed for her uh, before everybody. And they even wished her during mass. After mass, the father uh, prayed for her specially. And then almost everybody wished this lady happy birthday. And when they went home, they had breakfast and husband said, oh, honey, uh, don't make supper, let's go out. He went for work, he came back after lunch. He took her to a, a, a theater for a movie. They had a good time, then they went to a restaurant, had a good supper, then they went to the beach and they had chat until 11 p.m. Then they came back home. The husband was so happy, he thought that he had celebrated her birthday very well. But as they went back, the lady, <laughs> and uh, she turned her head away and she was so indifferent to him. The following morning, she did not respond to him, she didn't speak to him at all. He said, uh, I don't know how else I can satisfy this blessed woman, he said. <laughs> when I looked at her, she said, Father, this man did so many things the entire day, but he didn't have the kindness to buy a little gift for me. He didn't have the generosity to give me a little sari that would cost maybe 100 rupees or 200. When he heard us, he was shocked. Mm. He said, oh my gosh, Father, I had told my wife to buy whatever she wants. In fact, very often I used, I used to complain saying, hey, come on, you buy everything for me, for my children, for our children, but you don't buy anything for yourself. Come on, buy whatever you want for yourself. And he said, uh, even if this lady had bought a sari worth of 5,000 rupees, I would have been very happy and delighted about this. And he looked at her and said, buy whatever you want. She said, that's not the matter. You have to buy and give me. See? That was her, her love language is uh, uh, tokens of love. Yeah. And the fifth language of love is touch. You all know babies. Yeah. When you touch them, they feel so loved. Yes. There are people who has this this channel of touch. Now when I say touch, it is not hugging that person for a long period of time. It's not kissing that person 
for a long period of time or holding. It's just a little pat on the back. Mm. It's just a little holding of the hands. It's just a little tapping. That is all they require. When we say touch, we don't mean that everybody around them has to touch them. No, no, no. In fact, they could get very irritated when strangers touch them. They're, all that they require is touch from their loved ones, the ones who are within the family, the ones who are very close to them. And uh, it's uh, so powerful for those people. And there were experiments done among these people, the ones who have touch as their love language, okay? Uh, many people were asked to serve them, okay? And, and then finally these people were asked, who do you think really care for you and all that? They unconsciously, they mentioned the names of the ones who just touched them accidentally like this. But intentionally, they touched like that. And, and they were not aware of it. So when these people were touched a lot by their loved ones, especially the spouse, children and all that, that generated so much of energy within them and they became buoyant, happy and all that. And they have very high level of energy when they were touched. We see Jesus also touching people in many ways. If we read Mark chapter 1 verses 40 to 44, we see Jesus touching the lepers because lepers were untouchable. They had to be far away from people. Nobody would even look at a leper. Nobody would even go close to a leper. Okay, they were so afraid of contracting that illness. And what they needed was touch, a loving touch from others. So when Jesus touched them, they not only he not only cured the physical leprosy, he also healed the leprosy that was in their mind, that untouchability. That's wonderful. So we all have these five languages. For everybody, there's one language that is predominant and that is so powerful and that is their main mode of receiving love as well as offering love. We are also fortunate that we have a good shepherd who takes care of all our needs. And we read in John chapter 10, verse 10. I have come that they may have life and life in all its fullness. God, our good shepherd, We come to you with our arms open. You are our good shepherd. We are the sheep of your flock. Lord God, we are so happy to come to your green pasture where there is life and love to its fullness. Lord God, we thank you for using our language to express love. We thank you that you continue to affirm each and every one of us. We thank you that you are always present to us in the form of the Blessed Eucharist. We thank you, Lord, that you render service to us by various angels who intervene in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for your tokens of love. You continue to sustain us in love. You continue to feed us. And Lord God, above all, you keep touching us through various events, through various experiences in our lives. As we continue on our journey, teach us the art of understanding others' love languages. Like you, may we also sense the love languages of others. May we get into the frames of others and may we reflect your splendor to those who are interested to our care. 
We ask this in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.